President Trump campaigning today in North Carolina, where the latest RCP average shows a close race with Joe Biden about two, up about two points. The Tar Heel state, highly coveted by both sides with its 15 electoral votes. Hogan Gidley is the Trump 2020 National Press Secretary. He joins us now. Hogan, good morning to you. Why is the president spending time and the campaign spending time in North Carolina in particular, as well as a lot of time in Pennsylvania? Well, the president of the United States, Donald Trump, fundamentally changed the electoral map in 2016, winning states that so many Republicans had a tough time winning for decades. And so it's important for this campaign to defend the states that we won the first time around, securing another four years in office, and maybe even picking off a couple of other states like Minnesota, New Hampshire, other places that typically go blue. North Carolina is a very important state, obviously, in this election. It's my home state. I was born in, in the very town that Donald Trump is, is visiting this evening, Gastonia, and I have a lot of relatives there. They're excited about the president, and the folks I talk to on the ground um, are enthusiastic about getting out and voting for four more years of peace and prosperity, which they can have with Donald Trump. You know, there's a lot that can be pointed to in the days leading up to Election Day, 13 days out. Obviously, polling is one indication that we do use to get some sense of where the two candidates stand. Fundraising is another, Hogan. I'll put this up on the screen. This is a New York Times article on the fundraising gap that is happening right now. Trump's campaign, 63 million dwarfed by Biden's 177 million. New financial filings show the extent of the president's cash troubles as he is now badly outmatched by Joe Biden. What should be taken away from that, Hogan, as we do look for some sort of metric as to how the president is doing other than anecdotal, which your campaign uses so much about enthusiasm and crowd size? Well, look, I think the Biden campaign strategy is pretty clear. It's a, one that's going to be led from the basement with a barrage of television advertisements. You can't parachute in in the last minute and get people to go out and vote. No one really likes Joe Biden. The media d don't really care for him. They just hate Donald Trump. So they're skewing all of the coverage against this president. That's nothing new. 95% of the coverage is, is uh, antagonistic to Donald Trump. We have a massive ground game organization that is, quite frankly, the envy of the political universe. We had more than 130 million voter contact engagements year to date. That's extremely impressive. No one's ever seen anything like it. Barack Obama didn't have the massive volunteer army that we have. We have enough money to be up on TV and all the states needed to win. And as I said, pick off even more states. Well, the but Biden the fact is, you is get people out to vote. The Biden campaign is challenging that notion. This is Rufus Gifford, a Biden deputy campaign manager, put this statement out about the fundraising. Yikes. Remember when Trump said he would fund his own campaign if he needed to? Well, he needs to. And we know he doesn't have the money. Two weeks. How do you respond to that? I don't even know what that means. It's exactly what I just pointed out. The fact that Joe Biden thinks he can win this thing with television ads. We know he has a 47-year career of failure, so he can't point to anything he did do because everything he actually accomplished crushed the American worker, destroyed American companies, killed the American middle class. Mm -hmm. He can't point to anything he will do because it's all socialist agenda items. It's Green New Deals and open borders and abolishing ICE. This president has a 47-month in politics of record-setting success, okay. Joe Biden has half of a century so of failure. On that point, I want to ask you where the president's going to focus his messaging, not just when it comes to campaign rallies, but the debate stage Thursday night as well. Mike Huckabee made a really interesting comment this morning on Fox and Friends. He suggested the president's making a mistake by leading with Joe Biden and this Hunter Biden story. Here was the question on Fox and Friends this morning. Listen. He's leading with Hunter Biden. Is that a mistake? Yeah, it is a mistake because the average person doesn't understand it. It's too complicated. And frankly, it doesn't matter to them. They care about their health care costs. They care about their taxes. They care about safety in their neighborhood, on their block, and in their yard. Focus on that. He wins the election by a landslide. Is that a message that's getting to President Trump? Because you just heard that. You heard Ted Cruz also saying this isn't about Hunter Biden. This is about Joe Biden. So is the president taking that in? And what will we see as far as messaging on that story? You know I love Mike Huckabee. It's where I got my start in politics. I've been friends with his family now for 20 years. I consider him like a second father to me. I think he's a little bit off here, and he's buying some of the media hype. The president isn't talking about Hunter Biden. What he's talking about is Joe Biden. And what these emails now reveal 
is that Joe Biden is flat out corrupt. This is one of the big problems with Hillary Clinton back in 2016. The American people knew about Clinton cash. They knew about the Clinton Foundation and how sketchy all of that information but coming Hogan, out was. But Hogan, that's not the point. He, uh, that's not the point. He's not suggesting that that doesn't need to be looked into or discussed. He's just suggesting 13 days out, when it comes to the Trump campaign and the messaging from the president, talk about the economy, talk about the pocketbook but, issues, talk about yeah, safety in our streets. Right. But he did, he's doing that at every single rally, driving that home, because that's what matters to the American people. This president's policies have improved the lives of all Americans, regardless of race, religion, color, or creed. And I remember in the midterms how the media kept saying, why isn't the president talking about the economy? 80% of the speeches in the midterms about the economy. They didn't want to cover that. In fact, the only time they even mentioned the word economy was to say, we don't talk about it enough. The president so outlines he bring it all up on of the, the record setting successes night, in his speeches, a, and he's going to talk about what he's going to do for the future of all Americans as well, because that's what matters to the American people. Those successes that allow them to put food on the yep. table and clothes on their kids' back, yep. that's what Donald Trump brings to the table and what Joe Biden can't talk about and that's because he's never been about. able to accomplish it. I've got to go a few seconds, but the debate stage, if it's not a question, does President Trump strategically bring that up? Does he make the point himself? I don't want to get ahead of what the president will or won't do, but corruption is a major issue for the American people because they see what Washington has been doing, how they've been lying. Joe Biden is one of the chief, um, um, you know, problems in this city and in this country. And the corruption now is flowing into his family. And you see that. And I think the American people absolutely care about their politicians using taxpayer funded jobs to try and benefit their family. That's exactly what Joe Biden's been doing. And it is a serious issue we in this see. campaign. We'll, we'll see what they turn up on that as they look further into it. The FBI now has that laptop. Hogan Gidley, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks so much.